Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsans of Vool, and in this video we're going to demonstrate a Blender workflow using a range of add-ons to create this shape. Rounded shapes can look a little bit intimidating in Blender until you know what you're doing, and there are definitely add-ons that can help with this. So in this video we're going to be using these add-ons, though a lot of these tasks you could do without it, it will just take more time. So in creating rounded shapes without using Sub-D, I often find it easiest to focus on one axis at a time. The only thing that's tricky about this and requires a bit of experience is you need to learn which axis to start with, and for me this one's going to be starting from the Z-axis. So I'm making a circle, and we're going to up this to let's say 64 verts so that it's going to be nice and round, go into vertex mode, and then I'm going going to delete the bottom half of this shape. Then to create this trifold shape, we're just going to use hard ops and in mesh tools we're going to go to radial array and we're just going to scroll down to get this to three and I can make this to whatever sort of size that I want. Let's go for about there. Now this is creating an array so we need to apply that so I'm just going to use hard ops again to smart apply it. You can do that in the modifier stack however you choose to and we don't need this empty anymore so let's just hide that. Then we're going to go into vertex mode and we're going to start with construction lines which has this really funky arc tool which is going to sort this out really nicely. So I'm just going to go from there to there and then arc it in however much I want. Now hold down control and scroll up. So let's go for 32 vertices because we've already got half of a circle of 64. So that should make this nice and rounded and we can go as extreme as we want. So let's go for something like there and then I'm going to come out of construction lines and I'm just going to select those vertices and turn the transform pivot point to the 3D cursor. Shift and D, R and then we need a third of a circle so that's 120. Then I can just press Shift and R and that will do that again. At this point we are going to have some overlapping vertices, so we've got a vertex there that's going to be overlapping. So I'm going to press A, M and then by distance and that should delete those vertices that we've got duplicated here, here, here and here. At that point we should be able to A and F and it will create a face and we can just go into face mode and E and extrude that up however much we want that extruded up. And we've got this nice rounded shape. Next we want to create the rounded top, so come into side view, object mode, shift and A and bring in a UV sphere. Now let's up these to 64 to make it smoother. We could actually do 1, 2, 8. Let's go with something really smooth and then S to scale that up slightly. Now the problem with the UV sphere normally is if I go into vertex mode we have this point at the top that's not made out of quads but because we're going to be not really seeing that because it's not at the top anyway this isn't going to be a problem. Otherwise if it wasn't for that I'd probably be working with a quad sphere. So let's S and Z to sort of squish that down and then S and shift and Z to move that out and we're going to go for something around there looks about right. Then click our object, shift click the one we want to apply it to and then control and star or asterisk and we've got that working. Now this is still a boolean that is being applied at this point, we can see that there which is really nice because this is non-destructive so I can start having a look at this and see if I want to change it and at the moment yes I do want to change this. So I'm going to S and Z and scroll that down to somewhere about there, I think. Let's H that to have a look at it. Yeah, I think that's going to look good for that central hole section which we're going to have there. Now at this point we don't need to apply this yet, but we will have to later, and we'll do this central object next. Now there's a couple of ways of doing this. Firstly, you can come in and bring in a cylinder, and let's put this up to 1, 2, 8 again, and then S to scale it, and then S and Z to have it come through the center, and that's gonna be useful because we can put this up to a certain size. If I come to item here, so well, let's just control an A and apply the scale first, otherwise that'll have a problem. So for example, if I wanted this to have a dimension of let's say one, I can change that to 1 or 1 1.5 and it's getting that sorted. So we can do that that way if we want to. Let's get rid of that end panel and the other option, if I go Q and come to hard ops and mesh tools and then go to face extract, even though this isn't really an object at this point because it's still got the modifier, this allows me to click on that face that's being created, space and then I can drag in and then space again and I can extrude all the way down and then H. So we've got that even though this object kind of doesn't exist, which is really fun. We can, if we want to, still just Q and ever scroll, and we can bring this back N, and you can still change the dimensions here. So for example, I could go to 1.25 or something like that. So you can still muck around with this as much as you want. We can't do that, however, for these triform bits on the side. So let's shift an A, and we're gonna have to bring in a cylinder. Let's change that to 0 0.5, so we've got a total radius of one. Is that gonna be about right? Yeah, that should look good. And then again, Q, and then mesh tools, and then radial array, and we'll go to about there, looks about right. And then G and Z to bring that up slightly. 
and then click, shift, click, control and minus, and we've got most of this object done. Now, if we do want something like a flat section, because obviously this wouldn't be very good to bolt, let's click there, Q, and then ever scroll. Let's shift and D to duplicate that. And then let's go into vertex mode, A, and then we're just gonna S and shift and Z and scale that up slightly. You can, if you want to see this in place, just come over to where you've got your display and edit mode, and that way, I can be fiddling around with this and you can see exactly where it is. So I wanna to go to, let's say there, I think, and then object mode, and let's change these vertices actually. So G and Z, so we want it going to just about there, and then we can control and minus that out as well. So we've got this funky looking shape there. Maybe these ones in the middle need to be a bit smaller. You wouldn't really be able to fit a bolt on that. So that's Q, ever scroll, select that one, same thing, go into edit mode, S, shift and Z, so it's not doing it on the Z axis, and let's bring that to about there, something like there. Let's hide those, and we've pretty much got our shape sorted. Now at this point, let's round these edges so it looks a little bit nicer. For this, we are going to have to start applying things. So at this point is normally gonna be when I'm gonna save it, and then apply everything, and then we're just gonna go into edge mode. I think I want a chamfer here, so let's do something like that. Actually, let's do the same on each of these edges. And then over here as well and then control and B, and then let's put a chamfer in there, and then we want a chamfer all around this edge. For this, we're gonna use mesh machine, so click, alt click, and we've got that all sorted. Everything selected in one go. Y for mesh machine, offset cuts. Is that about enough? Probably is, yeah, stick with that, and then control and B, C to clamp, and then let's scroll that up so that's nice and round with 16 segments. And there we go, we've got our nice rounded object we could even do these bits as well if we wanted to let's have a look at how that looks so to select multiples of these with mesh machine what you do is shift click and then alt and click without the shift and it selects everything and then y and then offset cut that's going to be too much let's go with somewhere smaller so i'm just being careful not to catch this edge there and then Control and B. And we've got that nice rounded shape. So there we have our cool rounded shape ready for 3D printing in Blender. As always, if you found that useful, hit that like button so other people can see it as well. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel for more great content. And if you really want to support the channel further, we've got a Patreon page where you can get these videos a week ahead of time and without any of those annoying ads for just $3. Have a great day, guys.